Nerd Time with James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy has come to a close. So today I'm going to stop and rank all five MCU Guardians of the Galaxy projects from the least best to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Guardians of the Galaxy projects. My list is not the right list. It's just my list, and I'd love to see yours. And let's get started. In least best place, I am Groot, a charming set of shorts simply designed to put a smile on your face. There's no big gigantic story arcs here. There's no character arcs. It doesn't play into the grander mythology. There's simple little episodes of young, naive Groot getting into shenanigans designed to have something clever enough to make you smile. I am Groot. They're the sort of thing that when my kids are about to go to bed and they say, hey, can I watch one more thing? We put one of these on, have a little bit of fun, send the kids to bed. So it's not trying to be the best Guardians of the Galaxy project. It's just trying to be amusing for a few minutes and that's what it does. In fourth place, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, historically on my channel, the hottest take I've ever had is that I wasn't a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I had quite a few issues with it, and every time I rewatched it, the movie would move further and further down my rankings to the point that it got into the bottom five, which got a lot of angry comments over the last several years. That is, until a few weeks back when I rewatched it, and for the first time, I liked it more. Yeah! Yeah! And I appreciated it more. And I think the reason for that is over the last couple of years, I've had so many issues with MCU projects feeling like they were directed by committee, where there's that story committee trying to crack the stories, and there's all these stories about MCU projects being rewritten, in particular, just last week, story broke that the actress that played America Chavez said that they asked for 33 rewrites of Doctor Strange 2, and it, they didn't feel like pure artistic expression so much as the Marvel group trying to tell a story that made everybody happy. And when I rewatched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, after two years of that, Ant-Man and, and the Wasp Quantumania, supposedly they reshot the ending a month before the movie came out, like that. You watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and it felt like a true artistic expression with one creative voice. Maybe I didn't love all the choices that were made, but they felt like the ones that James Gunn actually believed in. Now repeat back what I just said. I am Groot. No! no, that's the button that will kill everyone. He had something he was trying to communicate, something he was trying to explore, and that's what he was doing with this film. And so in that context, it just felt much more fresh. It felt much more alive than a lot of projects of the last couple of years. And thus, I uh, had a new perspective on it. Likewise, some of the issues I had with the film was even the relationship between Mantis and Drax, where she's this girl enslaved by ego and Drax is just insulting her. I am hideous? You are horrifying to look at, yes. And she just takes it and shrugs and sinks into a hole. Whereas when you see the holiday special in volume three, their relationship evolves and she pushes back to the point that sometimes she hurts his feelings. And even that, knowing where the relationship goes and what it turns into, makes me appreciate the movie more. Whereas maybe they introduced their dynamic in a poor fashion, but I love what they ended up doing with it. All that said, I still have quite a few issues with the film. It's structured in a very odd fashion where each act has a different primary villain. The first act, it's the Sovereign. The second act, it's Taserface. And the third act, it's Ego. And because of that, it, it never really feels like the story has enough forward momentum or, or tension. Like we feel like we're moving towards a specific thing because James Gunn decided to withhold the fact that Ego is our main villain. We're kind of meandering around a little bit until it's like, surprise, he's bad. And you're not even able to process some of the big revelations, like that Star-Lord has thousands of dead siblings. 
that's horrific. It's grotesque. And it's just kind of an idea put out there. And then we move past it immediately. And it's like, you killed my mom. I'm mad at you. So some of that stuff was a little bit off putting to me and still is. I don't I don't think it was handled the best. And the tone, I think it, it can be too cruel, followed by slapstick humor without a proper bridge. A lot of the things that this movie seemed to be trying to do, I think volume three did a much better job of doing in seamless fashion. Uh, back to some positives. I think Yondu's arc is done really well. You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! It does make me laugh at times. And like I said, in light of volume three in the holiday special, I think this movie is better. The Sovereign are more interesting having seen volume three. Some of these relationships work better and dynamics are fleshed out. And so when you just see the part of the story, it didn't work as well for me as when you see the whole story with volume three. So... So I'm rethinking it quite a bit. I appreciate it more, and it's not as distasteful as it was for me, or as it was for five years. In third, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, and I thought this was just absolutely delightful. A fun little way to spend some time with our Guardians of the Galaxy that has some Christmas spirit that explores the characters a little bit, and that just puts a smile on your face. It Absolutely has a little bit of edge, in particular at the beginning with the animated section where Yondu's kicking over a Christmas tree. And this one here's for you. Don't come at me with no damn gifts. I hate Christmas. But by the end of it, it absolutely captures the Christmas spirit, puts a smile on your face. Something special he will never forget. What about some... There's all sorts of just standout funny lines. There's a couple of musical numbers in there. It's actually really efficient for how much is in this special in only 40 minutes. It's quite impressive. I love the dynamic between Drax and Mantis. And in particular, someone that prior to the holiday special had been very critical of that relationship. And then this special won me over to them. We're looking for the legendary Kevin Bacon. We're looking for the legendary Kevin Bacon. Be perfectly honest, my family rewatched this five or six times in December and January when it first dropped. I mean, my kids absolutely loved it and just wanted to keep rewatching it. And they started singing along to the intro Christmas song. I This one was a huge hit in my house and made my kids love the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is something that I greatly appreciate it. And this is almost certainly now a staple of the Christmas season in the Chandler household. You come with us. That's a Christmas present. Our runner up Guardians of the Galaxy. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know six months from now whether this one will reclaim the top spot or if volume three will stay in the top spot. Both of them provided a special experience in the theater for me. Thus, each has a strong argument for that top spot, but it's tough when one of them I've loved for nine years, one of them I've watched for the first time within the last two weeks. And obviously some recency bias can play into that. But as for why do I love the original Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn managed to take a set of C-list Marvel characters that the general public didn't know who they were and make us absolutely fall in love with them. I mean, I remember Comic-Con 2012 where they were announcing the slate post Avengers and they said they're doing Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was like, what on earth are you doing? Why on earth would you pick that project to follow up Avengers? And then they started casting the project and it's like a professional wrestler and the comedic side character from Parks and Rec. How is this thing going to work? And then they put out the first trailer and even from the trailer, it was like obvious. They knew that they had to win over the public and that they knew, hey, nobody knows who these characters are. 
So let's just make people fall in love with them. And all of the heart and liveliness and distinct flavor of the Guardians of the Galaxy was present in the very first trailer with the musical selections, the way the characters are introduced. It was all there. So I went to go see it opening night. Actually, right before I was about to, about to go on a trip with my interns, I took my interns to go see the original Guardians of the Galaxy and instantly fell in love with these characters. And even that they held back on revealing all of their cards, they didn't give away all the jokes in the trailer. So I was watching the movie. And as Star-Lord puts his finger on his neck to Drax. That's when you. Why would I put my finger on his throat? I'm like, wait, is that who Drax is? Is that who this character is? Is that where this movie's going? And I absolutely loved it. They marketed it perfectly. They found a way to instantly endure these characters to us that weren't the most well-known and that were very, very weird and tell an interesting story. James Gunn has said that he didn't want to copy Star Wars, but he wanted to make a movie that made other people feel the way he felt when he first watched Star Wars. And I think that's exactly what he did. He created this immersive, fun world with lively characters, with fleshed out backstories that are able to be serious, but also have heartbreaking, tragic stories. And just stop and think about this. This movie starts off, the first thing that happens in this movie about a talking raccoon and a talking tree is a woman dies of cancer. So it finds a way to like be rooted and grounded in some of the most tragic things that anyone can experience and take us on this big fantastical space adventure and by grounding it it feels human it feels real and so you're always in touch with the emotions why are you doing this we are and that's one of the things that James Gunn always has done such a great job with. It has a fantastic soundtrack, just like all of the projects that James Gunn has done. And so a movie that I absolutely adore and made me love these characters so much right out of the gate. But coming in in first place is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, as I said before. I just watched this one for the first time, so perhaps I do have recency bias. But this movie absolutely made me feel big emotions in a way that few movies have been able to. It's able to go from just this tragic story about Rocket to big, gigantic moments of victory and finding a way to send off the characters in a way that's bittersweet, where it's satisfying. It went completely against my expectations and predictions. I put out a video predicting which of these characters was going to die. I was 100% wrong on the thing. And still, he delivered something, James Gunn delivered something more interesting that I could come up with. Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? That's Do not bring me into this. <laughs> he subverted my expectations in the good way, which is to say he's a better writer than I am and found things with each of these characters that I didn't see, but that as soon as he explored them, I went, that's it. That's it. You got it. That's perfect. That's exactly what needed to happen. And so for me, that's what kind of elevates this one. The ability to have such a broad range of emotions in a single film. Now, of course, the big thing there is the exploration of Rocket's backstory. And with that, uh, James Gunn has always known what it was. And you go back to the original Guardians of the Galaxy and when they're introducing Rocket up on the screen, it says Lila's name in there. Later in the film, he starts talking about when he's angry, like, I didn't ask to be created. I didn't ask to be torn apart. All of that has been there since the be beginning of this franchise. And now we're finally exploring it. And even beyond that, James Gunn has said this script was written five years ago. He changed very little in the time period uh, between when he was fired, rehired, and delays making Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, all those delays, none of that changed the script in any significant fashion. And even to that point, 
it stands out amongst recent MCU projects. It's a singular vision where someone for years has known what he wanted to say with these characters. He's known what he wanted to explore with these characters. And so it feels cohesive. It feels earned. When it has the final reveals about what we're going to do with Drax, what we're going to do with Nebula, you can look back and see the path that they've been on that led to this because it was one guy. They remind me of a time when I took my daughter to the forgotten lakes of my home world. She was like you. Disgusting. Innocent. That always knew what he was trying to do rather than we're rewriting Doctor Strange 33 times. We're reshooting the ending of Quantum Mania a month before the movie comes out. We're reworking everything, trying to make it for the broadest possible audience. No, James Gunn loved these characters, had a story to tell with these characters, and he was able to finally complete it with this film. And you get just this like absolutely gut-wrenching story about Rocket. Pete, I'm done running. And as soon as you think about this movie in light of Infinity War, two different times Rocket has lost all of his friends and watched them die. Re reframes your understanding of his state of mind in Endgame and where he's at currently in this film post-Endgame. There's all these little things to consider with everything. And so a movie that took characters I loved and found a way to complete their arcs and in a satisfying way that made you feel like, yeah, that was right. I'm sad that I'm losing them, that they've broken up, but I'm so happy that they're starting to find healing and moving forward. So for me, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a ton more content just like it. You can check it right over there in that playlist. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.